Hey everybody, welcome to Blake Art Materials uh, demonstration of American flag abstract art. Um, my name is Sharon West of Sharon West Fine Art and I am super excited to be here today to demonstrate my art for you guys. Um, but before we start, I just want to let you know I'm a brand ambassador for um, Blake Art Materials and I'm a palette knife artist and I'm super excited about doing texture um, with my art. So I spent several years researching co different cool techniques uh, to incorporate texture in art. And so today I'm going to show you a few different ways we can do that, that I've found. Uh, let me just show my desktop here. Um, one way that you can incorporate tex texture in your art is through something called paint skins. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with paint skins. I really wasn't, um, but then I started doing some research. And all paint skins are is uh, dried paint. So this is paint that came from, um, was left over from a, a painting that I did, a palette knife painting. And uh, it's dried, and I peel it off my palette and save it to create art. So this is an example of that. This is an American flag that I created with, um, with paint skins. It's 100% it's dried paint. Uh, so I just sketched on the American flag and I can show you some more um, examples of paint skins here. This is, um, this is left over probably from doing a, a sunflower art. Uh, so then, you know, when I'm done with it, I just take my palette knife and I just sort of spread it out so that I can sort of see the different colors and different values. And then I literally peel it off and glue it uh, onto the, the piece. And it creates some really cool textures. So paint skins are, if you haven't heard of them before, um, I hadn't. Uh, it's a really cool way to incorporate texture into your art. You can see with this piece that um, you can see sort of the profile. If you look at the profile of it, you can see how the texture just kind of pops out from the from the piece. And it, you know, peeling and and breaking the pieces up to to make the flag have the values that it needs to look like it's waving also adds kind of an interesting uh, look to. To your art, so that that's paint skins. Um, another way that you can um, you can incorporate texture in your art is uh, through uh, texture mediums. So that's what that's an example here of um, a an American flag that I did, just mixing acrylic paint with texture mediums. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Uh, sort of a combination of texture mediums, mixing them with um, acrylic paint, and then also incorporating painted paper. So these two American flag art are created, this one is created with 100% uh, painted paper. So these are old menus and um, scraps of, of junk mail and little newspapers and all sorts of different uh, pieces of paper that I collect and then I paint with a jelly press. And then I use the paper to create the art. So there's no the only paint that's involved is the paint that I use to um, to paint the paper with. So and then with this one, I did the background just like this with the painted paper, but then I did the texture medium acrylic paint on top. So it's sort of mix and match. There's different things that you can do to to add texture to your to your art. Um, and then this is one more. This was um, some painted paper as the background, palette knife, texture medium on top. And these are actually words that I cut out with my Cricut. Um, and here's an example of one. And then I paint that and I apply it with gel medium. Um, so it's another way of, of incorporating texture in your art. But for today's project, I'm going to do the painted paper with a combination of palette knife and um, texture media. So I'm going to start by giving you a little um, tutorial here of my, my texture, uh, my paper painting. So these are papers 
that I painted. Um, th this is from an old um, newspaper that I got in an airport. This is just a, a printed paper that I ended up dying with, um, with, with paint. This is just a piece of paper that I textured layers on top. Uh, so you can see that they all, you know, they don't look that beautiful in and of themselves. But what you do is you have your underpainting and you tear the paper, the value that you need, and you glue it down with a gel medium. So even though this piece of paper may not look that beautiful to you, a little tiny sliver of it within this artwork um, really can make an amazing piece of art. So I like to incorporate paper pretty much in every single piece of, of work that I do, and I'm going to show you guys how to use the, the jelly plate uh, so, to create paper. So this is my jelly plate. It's made by Jelly Arts. You can get it um, at Blick. Um, mine is really gunky. It's, it's got a lot of paint on it already, um, and uh, so that, that actually can make some pretty cool looking papers. Uh, because it picks up the bits of paper uh, of paint and sort of works it into the the, the finished piece. Um, I can show you some samples. So this is paper that I painted. Um, these are old card Christmas cards that that didn't work out. And so what I did was I used my jelly press to um, to layer different shapes and, and textures and colors one on top of the other and the whole goal is to continue to layer until you've got a really cool kind of piece of paper. So these are just thank you notes that I use. I send when, when people buy my art on my website. I incorporate um, some of these papers with um, sign my name and, and enclose it in my in the package when I mail that out. But see, these are all individually hand-painted, handmade. Um, really cool patterns emerge when you do layer upon layer upon layer. Um, so I think these are beautiful the way they are. And, you know, I could even keep doing layers if I wanted to, but um, I'm going to show you just a very quick tutorial on how to use the jelly plate and um, for, for this particular project, I like to incorporate green with my red, white, and blue theme, uh, American flag, because I think the green and the red um, complement each other really well. So I pulled out my green papers here. Uh, so I'm going to work on doing that. So these are the fluid, the Utrecht fluid acrylics. Um, they work really well in the jelly press. And uh, they have a very good viscosity, and um, they are not too translucent if you add a little white to them so that you can um, sort of change up the look of the paint. But they can be translucent if, if, you, if, if you need them to be. Um, so you just put paint right on the jelly press. And... Roll it out with a brayer. Now, I went to a, a workshop with my sister um, of Elizabeth St. Hilaire. She's a very well-known paper paint, paper artist, paper paintings. And so she taught us her techniques. Mine is just a little bit different because I like to make things even more textured. Um, but you can use pretty much anything on the jelly press to uh, incorporate different shapes and patterns. So let's see. So this is just some kind of a trivet or something. I don't even know. My sister gave it to me. She, she, she probably has the other half. Um, but it pulled off these cute little triangle shapes. And so that'll make that pattern on this paper. And so the whole point is to sort of layer and I know, for example, that this, you know, in and of itself doesn't look like the most beautiful piece of paper, but when you incorporate it into a, a painting like this or into um, the sides of what we're going to do is incorporate it into the American flag, it really adds a, a whole different dimension than if it was just something that was plain painted plain. So 
Let me um, get some more of my fluids here. Um, let's see. Got some more green here. Like I said, I want to do some green. So there's all sorts of things that you can use to make marks using the jelly press. So this is just one little, um, this trivet here is just one way to do it. Um, these are pressing plates. Let me get one of them out. And you can just press it on here and then take your paper And then you can transfer it on if you want. But then you can see it left a really cool pattern on the jelly plate. And you can use another piece of paper to sort of pick that up. And you have to experiment with sort of how, how much paint you put on. I have a tendency to put a lot more paint than other people do. Um, so you can see how it picked up some of those swirls here, some of that. Uh, this one was made with, you can see these marks here. I'll see if I can make some more. I'm going to add some white to this. Um, the white allows you to, if you get too busy or too dark or too solid, like this one is getting kind of solid, you don't really see a lot of, the actual outlines of the textures that you're putting on. So I like to add white and then um, that sort of neutralizes it a little bit. Uh, this is just plain bubble wrap you can use and that creates kind of a cool pattern. I've actually had people say when it almost looks like kissing lips. So for Valentine's Day when I did some of those cards uh, with my with my um, bubble wrap so you can see how it, it actually does kind of look like kissing lips there um, but then you have now a nice pattern on here and I can take so, sort of one of my darker papers that I've been working on and put that down on that to pick that up because I don't like to waste any um, so this is so, and that looks kind of cool too. So anything, you've got trivets, you've got um, punchinella. I don't know if you've heard of that. I've got, um, this is a placemat. Uh, you can pretty much make textures with any kind of, make marks with any kind of texture, any kind of um, trivet or, um, like I said, bubble wrap. There's, it's really endless, the amount of textures you can, and patterns and stuff that you can make just with everyday objects. You don't even have to buy anything. You'd be surprised at the stuff you may have around your house. So that is my quick jelly plate tutorial. Um, so I'm going to set that aside because that's not, I'm not going to be spending the whole day doing that. And I've got my green um, papers here. And so then once we get to putting the paper down, so this is the canvas for today's project. Um, let me make sure you can see that. And I've got my papers here. So the way we're going to start this, I gesso the edges and the back to begin with. Um, I think that makes it um, look more finished. And then also it helps the, um, the paint to adhere to it a little bit better. So I'm just going to sketch my, uh, my flag shape here. This I come down just a little bit more than a third. And just sort of to give myself a guideline. Um, so this is a 12 by 24. So I don't really do exact because everything I do is abstract and imperfect and that's one of the things I like about doing this art. But there's 12 inches between here. I always like to start with a red 
and end with a red, which means I've got to divide this up into a, about 10. Um, so I can just make a mark, just a general mark. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, and then we'll do that same over here. Let's see, where did I end up? So as far as incorporating the paper, what I like to do is just sort of around where the red is going to be, I, I put the, um, the green. And what's going to happen is when I put the paint on with my palette knife, it's going to um, scrape on that, and then it'll just peek through a little bit. So... Um, This is the gel medium that I use. It's the matte gel medium uh, to apply the paper to my, my um, canvas. I like the matte medium because it, it sort of blends right in with the canvas. The gloss I love too, but I use that just for the paint. So, um, but the gel, the, um, the matte gel makes the paper adhere without sort of giving it that shiny look. Um, let's make sure you guys can see what's going on here. Um, so you just need a stiff bristle and I'm just going to lay some green paper that I made here. I'll just lay it down and then put the, the medium on top as well. And it doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, basically nothing I do is perfect. Everything is sort of abstract and imperfect. Um, and I like it that way. So uh, my hat's off to all the realistic realism artists out there that can achieve that look. Uh, I don't have that skill necessarily, and that's okay with me. So, um, so this is going to be so red, white. This is going to be red here. So I'll just put a little bit more. this down. So I got a couple questions. Um, how did I get into painting? Well, my mom always painted with a palette knife. So I grew up sort of watching her and loving what she did. Uh, loving the texture and the fact that, you know, that it was all painted with a palette knife. And um, so I always, I always admired that and, and wanted to, to do it too. But, um, you know, I had three kids and was busy life and all that, and I just never really took the time to, um, to do that for myself and, and until, you know, my last one went to college, and I just decided it was time for me. So I set up an easel in my bathroom, and I... Um, I started painting and and that's when I really fell in love with texture and tried to figure out different ways to do it and when I started I just piled thick paint onto the canvas with my palette knife and um, I was really disappointed because the the paint just it was beautiful when I first laid it down it was really thick you know similar to to the way this one looks but once it dried, it just went totally flat. There was no texture, no depth, no nothing to it. And it was devastating. <laughs> um, and I couldn't figure out, you know, how, how are these artists achieving this look? 
And so I did a lot of research and um, actually reached out to quite a few artists who, uh, who I'm sorry to say, never answered me. And I was kind of depressed about that because, um, you know, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't trying to steal their secrets or anything. I was just trying to learn, you know. And um, so I vowed after that that, you know, if ever anybody wanted to know what I knew or learn my technique, that I would always share it because I'm not, you know, there's only one me, there's only one them, and I don't, I think that there's more than enough uh, art to go around in this world, and, you know, I'm happy to, to help people get where they want to be, but it was really shocking because I, I was surprised that people were so unwilling to um, sort of share so anyway, that's how I started getting into it. As a matter of fact, I, I mentioned my mom. I have, um, I did put aside, I have one of her paintings here to show you all. This is uh, a painting that my mom painted for me, um, all with palette knife. So you can see she has um, sort of a more classy, uh, delicate style than mine. But this was, you know, my first inspiration just as a little girl, just... Uh, you know, the impasto technique that she used with this. So I think this is really a lovely piece, and I treasure it. Um, so anyway, let me um, see what some of the other questions I have here. Uh, what inspires my artwork? Just things that I love. I love, uh, you know, the American flag. I'm an Army brat. My dad was a West Point grad, and uh, so, you know, I grew up with a great respect for the flag and for this country and for all that he did uh, in his career, so that inspires me. Um, I love pets. I love animals, um, and so um, I love to, to paint dogs and um, cats and cows and pigs and every and you know animals in general um seascapes get some hair on here oh uh, you know i love the ocean so that's something that that's another um inspiration for me uh let's see someone's asking why do i prefer to use a palette knife i really like abstract impressionistic look and a palette knife gives you that um, I'm not that I'm not as comfortable with a, a brush I mean I, I can paint um, paintings with with a brush uh, and I have done some if I have any on here but this started out with a brush um, but I don't know I just really like the abstract impressionistic look that um, that you can get with a palette knife and so um, so that's why I enjoy that um, let's see how do you incorporate words okay so I love incorporating words in my art so I showed you a couple pieces that have words. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can handwrite, you know, with, with your brush. Um, I like to do uh, certain special words, you know, if you want it to be a certain style or a certain font. Like I said, I, I, uh, I use my Cricut to create this. Then I paint it, and then I jelly um, gel medium uh, lay it down with gel medium uh, so that's another way uh, you can also do uh, words with um, um, by just painting the negative space around the letter and um, when I do my for the uh, the Blick artist page that they're going to be putting up I'm going to be putting tutorials up and I'm going to be incorporating uh, how to incorporate words into your 
art and that'll be one of the videos I'll be putting up. So, and this is just paper from a, an adult coloring book that I painted. So you can see the coloring part of the page be in behind there. So it adds a little bit of kind of a cool pattern to it. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Do I create any other artwork besides impasto? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the paper is a big aspect of it. Uh, I'm creating these right now. These are what the world needs now, globes. So I'm painting Love, Sweet Love on some globes, getting those ready for Christmas time. Um, I do cards. Let's see if I have a card to show. These are, these are some tags that I made with the painted paper. Um, some to from tags that I've made. Greeting cards, let's see. Um, oh, these, set these aside. These are some, some angels that sort of incorporate everything. Um, this is texture medium done with a palette knife. This is pa silver paper. This is the paper that I made. I, I layered it on top of texture medium after it dried. I used stamps to create the background. Um, so this is sort of a combination of all the different different texture techniques. Um, so, yeah. All right, so I've got, I think, enough green on here. I actually might do a little bit more on the edge because the edge is, um, is where I like it to show. And this, is, this bottom stripe is going to be a red stripe. So I want it to show through there. And the paper, it's, you know, it normally, I mean, for this demo, I'm just going to keep going. Normally, I might, I would let this dry, but it really doesn't have to dry thoroughly. Um, you can just, you can just lay it down and, and, um, and then do your paint over it. So how has my artwork changed over time? Oh, I mean, it's it's changed tremendously because of, you know, it seems like every time I turn around, I find a new idea or a new way to incorporate texture into my art. So um, I can show you another American flag that I have that uh, it has fabric, it has paper, it has... Um, paint. It has stamped paper. It has all different kinds of textures. So, okay, so I think that's good for the paper. Gel medium here. So a lot of people ask me uh, about, you know, the gel medium that I use. Um, I've already, just in the interest of time, I've come up with, I've already started pulling together my paint here. Uh, but I wanted to mix it for you and show you how I do it. So this is the gloss gel that I use to add to my acrylic paint. And I mix it probably one to one. It might even be one and a half to one. To be honest, I don't really even measure. I just do it by feel at this point. So uh, this is the stuff that I use. And I buy it by the gallon, as you can see. Um, so let me start pulling this together. Got so let me move my paper now, since we're not doing paper anymore. I'm not the neatest person in the world. Um, I'm fairly organized, but it's just all part of sort of the, there's so many things going on. So let me clean this up here a little bit. Get out of the way so everybody can see what's going on here. Um, 
on the my little, paint, my little paint skin over here and out of the way. These are my palette knives. So you can see that they're very well loved and very well worn. I usually at least clean that part off, but I didn't that time. Um, and they sort of grow, have grown and continue to grow as I use them. People offer to buy these from me, as a matter of fact, but um, I haven't sold one yet because I need them. <laughs> and they feel, it almost adds to the handle the way they, um, they get built up this way. So these are the paints that I'm using, the Utrecht um, Artist Acrylics. Uh, they've got um, really good pigment. They've got a very good heavy body texture to them, so they, they really hold, uh, hold in my knife. And so I've got some here already on the plates. Um, I normally use, this is my, uh, my palette. This is a glass palette, um, and but these are leftover paints, probably from I'm guessing from a hydrangea painting that I did, um, and these are more skins. So I just let them dry here. I'm just showing you. I don't usually use those plates because you can't let paint dry on those. You can't reuse it that way. So I don't like to waste anything, but um, I'm just showing you what I what I have here. Okay, so let's, people always want to see me do this, so I was going to do it in advance just to give, just to save a little time, but, uh, so this is just straight acrylic paint. And I'm going to go ahead and mix it with my gel medium. So you can see what I'm doing here. Just plop it on here and then I like to sort of pull it into the gel medium and I don't know if I have too much paint here or not but I have more than enough for this project that's for sure. Now you can see that the paint is getting slightly lighter in color because of the gel medium has a white color when it's wet but it does dry clear so if you do this you have to remember I've had it happen before where this color was the perfect color that I needed but it always dries darker so you have to sort of factor that into your mind and try to envision um, the color that you're looking for and sometimes I just leave like an unmixed piece of paint there just to remind me of what the color actually is. Uh, so there is my red. I go through wipes like crazy here. I um, actually should have done the white first. So I can use a different knife. But... Um, so let's go ahead and with the blue. Um, let's see. Once again, just take a big scoop, plop it on, don't measure, and then mix it in. This one really gets very much lighter than. Uh, the paint, when it's wet, it's lighter anyway, so that when it dries, it's even darker than, um, than what you see. But you just get used to that, and sometimes, you know, I'm not that happy with, with the fact that my paint color has shifted a little bit, but uh, it doesn't usually matter with these American flags, and... Um, and people never, never complain. <laughs> so, um, anyway, let's see, let's get the, the white going. Maybe I'll use a different, a fresh, one of my fresher palette knives to mix that. 
Uh, thank you. I, I don't know who said that, but somebody said they love this one already. Well, that's nice. Thank you. That's good to hear. Um, here's my white. Uh, I might put a little extra gel medium here with this white because um, I'm going to need a lot of white. And I need it for the stars. As a matter of fact, I might section off because this this paint gets messy <laughs> if you didn't figure that out already uh, it gets messy and I don't mind too much if the paints mix on the on the piece of work on the art um, you can see in this one where you know the blue sort of got drawn into the white and whatnot I don't mind that at all I like that but sometimes I want it to stay um, a little bit more true to the color so um, and then I usually do the the stars last so um, what happens with the stars is if I don't have any good white paint by the time I'm done putting it all down here then um, I have to mix some more so oftentimes what I do is I just put some in a little baggie which is what I'm going to do here. And just enough for the stars. And I'll probably have a little bit left, but that might actually be too much. But So I'll set that aside for a little bit of time um, until we start doing the stars. So, um, like I said, I like the um, my flags to start and end with red. Um, so I do that, I strategically plan it that way. Put this out of my way. Let's see if everybody can see everything. Um, let me see if I can see any of, any comments here. Oh, thank you, David, for saying this is inspiring. That makes me feel really good. Um, okay, so let me get started. So we'll start with the red. Uh, make sure my knife doesn't have too much other paint on it. I'll use this one. And you know what? Sometimes I normally clean off the blade, but sometimes, you know, there'll be some paint left on it or I'll just get distracted and do something else. And that's okay because sometimes that will create kind of a cool texture too. So I've just made my imperfections work for me um, because nothing I do is perfect. <laughs> and um, this, and I like that. And you know, and everybody doesn't have to. And that's that's the beauty of it too. You know, everybody does not necessarily are not gonna like my art or love my art, and that's okay with me. You know. So let me just start. Oh, see, I already made a mistake. Let me just start with my top uh, red stripe here. And I just lay it on. I mean, it's not too different from doing a, um, you know, I guess icing a cake or something. But I'm not mad about this plop here. I could have left it too. Um, this whole canvas has white and black gesso on it, so it will definitely grip the grip the color. Um, I'm sure you can see. And I go back and do the sides again. Just getting it on here. Um, go and then I want some of this green to show so I might just do a little scrape here just to leave it like that um, let's get a white stripe going now this is definitely going to pick up some of the red I just I just know it but that's okay you can see how I'm sort of leaving the green, just peeking through. 
it's not super prominent but you know red and green is as you probably know are complementary colors so they really make each other pop and um, yeah I like that so let's just go with that and you know I can direct my knife to sort of cut the paint right where I want it to and it just adds a little extra interest um, so that's my white palette knife let's go ahead with this one for the red oh gosh this one's got dirt on it so I like to sometimes bring it down instead of dragging it directly across because it distributes the paint a little bit better sometimes so sometimes I'll do that and I'll uh, go back over it then And I come back and I do the sides as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure I get the right number of stripes in here. Um, go back to the white. And sometimes you have to kind of angle it angle your knife just to sort of get it where you want it to be. Now obviously this knife sort of makes a triangular shape and so you have to sort of go back to make it more straight. Um, now we're going to get that. And I like to do the flag with the waves and I also like to do them straight. So this one um, is going to be one of my straight ones. I, I like that look. So let me just make sure. Let's do a red one here. I think I'm going to move my blue up a little so that I can do a red stripe directly this way. I hope I'm getting my stripes right. I'm worried I might not be. That's okay. It's perfectly imperfect and that's sort of been my thing and I don't I don't mind. Um, what I could do is put the red down here and then count up. But let's just keep going here. So someone's asking if there's a matte version. Yeah, there's a matte gel medium that you can use. There's also if you if you like the way that the matte, I mean that the that the gloss gel looks, and you like the way it holds the texture and the thickness for you. See these peaks and valleys are going to stay. They're not going to go flat, and that is really important to me. I remember I did a floral once, and I came home. It was so beautiful. <laughs> I thought it was so beautiful. I came home and it was just horrible because it just went completely flat. So it looked like, you know, I just didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I guess I didn't. Um, and it looked like it. Um, but what I was going to say is if you want to use the, the gloss medium because you like the way it feels on your knife or you like uh, the way it holds up, better you can do that and you can use a matte spray um, hey Tammy um, over it and make it um, make it matte too 
And you can also do that with gloss as well. So you can, I like to seal it with a gloss sealer. I like my art glossy. Uh, so there are different, different ways you can, you can do it. So this one is getting, this, these stripes are getting a little curvy, which is fine with me. Sometimes they are, and sometimes they aren't. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll see if I can make some shading so that these look like they have a little bit more movement in them. So, uh, let's see how we're doing on our stripes. Hopefully everybody can see. Move it up a little here. Um, yeah. So let's try one more stripe here. And I'm going to make this one move also, because that's sort of what the painting is doing. So I sort of like to go with the flow also, um, and let things sort of organically happen. And and I don't, I like that, because sometimes things that happen in my art, I'll be totally honest, comes as a surprise. Like, it's like, oh, well that's cool, I'll, I'll stick with that. And sometimes that's sometimes how I learn, like, to achieve certain, certain, uh, techniques or certain effects is that I'll just experiment and next thing I know it becomes a thing you know and it it looks intentional so uh, and hopefully that makes everybody out there watching feel like Okay, I don't. Maybe I don't have to be that perfect because I'm not a classically trained artist. I didn't go to art school, none of that, which is fine. You know, that was my path, and I that I would have loved to, but I didn't, and um, that's okay. You know, it doesn't mean you can't be an accomplished artist or have something to say with your art. You know, you can just go for it, and that's what I did, and. Um, it's just enjoyable, you know, so you should try. So you see how, you know, the palette knife isn't anything really scary. Um, you get one in your hands and you'll, you'll uh, realize that it's not, it just feels different than a brush and it's not going to be exact. Although I bet there probably are artists out there that can do realism with a palette knife. Well, my mom did more realism than I am. With a palette knife, but um, oops. But it's not something that I'm super good at. Uh, so let's top it off with our red stripe down here, and. Should have gotten a little more green in there, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Would non-bleeding tissue paper work with this process? Yes. All kinds of paper would work. Um, the I thought I had some tissue paper. Well, some of the paper that I, uh, this paper was was um, some of the paper that I was using. And this is tissue paper. It was pre-printed tissue paper that I painted on top. So then I have two layers. I've got the handwriting here, I don't know if you can see it. And then I had paint on top of it. So yeah, tissue paper would work. Copy paper would work. Old menus would work. Junk mail works. I mean, when I started doing this with my sister, we were both obsessed. Like any piece of paper that wasn't nailed down, I literally, <laughs> I literally pulled a, a, a wax piece of printed paper out, out from under somebody's sandwich <laughs> one time and um, and said, oh, do you mind if I take that? <laughs> so 
So um, yeah, you can use pretty much any kind of paper. Um, and if it rips, if it rips, just experiment with it. So let's get this blue here going. Let me get the stars going as well. So I like to leave a little space between the colors. I like, I don't know if you all can see this here, I like the way the, the palette knife just sort of imperfectly creates textures and patterns. Uh, I try not to um, discourage that. So this doesn't look perfect here and that's what I love. So let's see if I can get some painting going on the top. I'll come back uh, and probably fix that up a little bit, but for now, just for the purposes of this demo. So, so there you go. I mean, that's a quick and dirty, you know, American flag. Um, but, you know, we're saving the best for the last, which is the stars. So, um, American flag stars, you make them, let me see if you can see this. So, my sister taught me this. So you have to make sure that the, the, the two arms of the front, you go straight, okay? And then the bottom are that shape. So you go one stick, like a stick figure, a straight across and then like a V. So that's what I like to do. Um, I do it with the palette knife. I also do it with this little, you know, having pipe it sort of with a baggie. Um, and then I sometimes I do a combination of the both. But the important thing to remember is start in this corner and then sort of tie, you know, mentally figure out. Sometimes I'll just take my knife and I'll just put it like a little spot where I'm going to put them and then space them out. I want to make these sort of decent size. So I'll just do, again, nothing exact or perfect. But see, now I've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's perfect because that's an odd number. And I'll probably do three, three layers. So uh, what I'm going to do is alternate them. So this is the space between these two. So I'll put one there. And here's the space between these two. I'll put one there. Here's the space between those two. Here's the space between those two. There's the space. And then here, this one should line up with this one. So I'll put a star there. I don't know if I'm going to even be able to see these. Uh, and then I'll put a star there. So it's important to remember things like odd numbers are, are good. You know, you don't want to do four stars. It's best to do like five. Five and three, or five and seven, or whatever you want to do. But always start here because these are the ones you want to line up. You can sort of fudge when you get to the end if you want, or what you, another thing you could do is start here and then there, and then build in between, so you can adjust in between. Um, let's see if I've even got the whole light. So there. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Those are five sticks. And then we'll do the arms across. And I'm going to go in and adjust these two and then just a little V. So then the arms across, just a little V, arms across. I like to keep the stars as white as possible. I don't know why, that's just one of the, I've got a little blue going on in there and that's okay. But I like to keep the, the stars as white as possible. So just placing them for now. Here's another one. So I'll just start with that one. And they're spaced in between, so they look, it's more satisfying to look at. So there's kind of a weird looking one. Let's get these arms in. And then get these legs in. And I'm picking up some more blue, so I'm going to clean this off. 
And then just the last row here, just try to space them up. I'm moving them a little bit from where my original marks were. Um, let's see, five rows in between. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I could probably start one here too. Again, nothing's perfect. Everything's imperfect. And that's how I like it. I'm not just piping these on. I'm going to go back in and sort of add a little palette knife stroke to it. Uh, and I do them on the side as well. So you take, I can take one of my skinnier knives or I could even take a skewer. This is a skewer that I have and just sort of add like strokes to it. Uh, to give it a little bit of a little bit of more interest. I don't really want to leave them just piped on. I don't feel like so now I'm being a perfectionist. Suddenly I'm a perfectionist, but uh, it's just my thing. I like to have the the stroke, and and I could use I could you know I could switch to a palette knife and do it with a knife as well. Um, it gives it a slightly different look, but again, perfectly imperfect. Um, yeah, so that is basically it. Now, what I, if I had more time, I would add some more uh, paint to, to add some sort of some more like texture as far as um, showing the different values here. But since we're pushing almost an hour with this, um, I think I'm going to leave this. But I do want everyone to know I have a complete, I'll have a products list of all the products that I use on my Blick artist page. As soon as that's ready, it's not up yet. But for now, if you go to my website, it's um, it's available on my website. You just sign up for my email list, and I will email you that. Um, I also, I think I'm offering everybody 10% off original art. Um, and I did want to show you, this is sort of the Mac Daddy of my uh, American flags. This one is has all kinds of, this is paper. This actually even has ribbon. Um, it has painted paper, it has texture medium that was painted on top of. Of course, it has the acrylic paint, it has stamps, it has all sorts of different, pretty basically every technique that I've shown you tonight, tonight um, all incorporated in one. So just wanted to show you um, an example of one of the pieces that incorporates everything. So... So this has been so much fun for me, and I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And thank you so much to Blick Art Materials for allowing me to, to do this Facebook uh, Live takeover. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me create this piece of art. And uh, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks again. Bye-bye.